I was a soldier once, filled with proud notions of who I was and what I stood for. Convinced what I did was for the good of the many. Well, there goes the element of surprise. My name is Chuck O'Shea, and I'm the head of the Assassin Studio. We came up with Assassin basically based on the fact that uh, about a year and a half ago we were playing a lot of stuff like Doom and, and uh, Dark Forces. And so what we tried to do with Assassin is we sort of broke down everything that we didn't like about the other games and kept a lot of things that we did like. We'd like to have a storyline, which is you know something really unique in any sort of first-person shooter. The only kind of games that you saw that had a storyline were, were full-motion video games for the most part. And uh, we wanted to exploit what was most fun about those other first-person shooters, and that was basically killing. You know, you wanted to be able to shoot as much stuff as possible, but you didn't want to be in a situation where you had killed everything in the level, but you couldn't exit. So what we did was we decided by putting a storyline and by putting motivation and a plot into the game, we could, we could give you a, uh, a reason for going through it, and we could stack the level with with more enemies because you'd have a, a set goal to achieve and by achieving that goal you'd actually pass through all the areas where the enemies occurred. When we first started talking about Assassin and, and what we wanted to do to make it different, we wanted to add a story element and the thing that we kept coming back to was uh, Die Hard that starred Bruce Willis and we liked the, the element of somebody be put, being put into a situation where they weren't sure exactly what was going on but uh, the plot would unfold as they progressed through this environment and we like the idea of putting it in a building. As you play the game you'll see uh, you'll see environments that range from uh, rooftops, uh, you'll see uh, production areas which have conveyor belts and uh, you know basically areas where they produce the robots in the in the bowels of the building. You'll see the basement area, uh, you'll see office areas, you'll see uh, levels that are under construction and it pretty much runs the gamut of, of different styles and I think uh, it makes the game a lot more interesting for the player because instead of going from level to level and just experiencing new enemies, they'll go from level to level and experience new environments. Hi, I'm Matt McDonald. I'm the art director, cinema designer for the Assassin Project. Well, first off, we'd storyboarded the entire um, opening sequence, all the between level cutaways and the in level cutaways. From those storyboards and character design sheets, we, um, we designed the characters. We used Lightwave on the PC to model all the characters, and all done in 3D, and then we used motion capture to animate those characters. In the process of the, the development of the project, we used uh, Lightwave as well to, to uh, build the environments for the cinematics, and then we used the, that environment to create uh, texture maps to be used in the game so we had the most cohesive throughout the game between the cinematics and the gameplay. It was important to us to have a cohesive look because of uh, games like um, Wing Commander that went from cinematic quality film type um, look to uh, real-time 3D, which is ov obviously nothing like that. Um, we wanted to keep something that was totally consistent, that there wasn't going to be any abrupt changes to make you feel that you're taken away from the game or taken somewhere else. We wanted everything to feel the same throughout the entire game. My first source of inspiration for the project was probably Blade Runner, and you can see that's pretty evident in the opening sequence, um, as well as some of the characters' clothing, uh, the street clothes. And then, as well, we used, you know, sources like Robocop, uh, Japanese animation, uh, different uh, uh, Robotech-type characters we used in the environment um, or in the game. As far as the architecture, we, we tried to make it look um, different, but not too different, because it's a near future, it's not the far distant future, and we wanted to keep something consistent. And we also kind of went for a little, a bit of a retro futuristic look with um, the vehicles, you'll see they're, they're kind of um, rounded, uh, soft style, like almost out of the 50s, but yet they're in an environment that's more futuristic. The EVAC, when we designed it, it was, uh, uh, we wanted a hovercraft that looked like a helicopter, but also a salt 
aircraft, so we took, uh, I took different parts of different vehicles that I liked and then put that all together into the evac. Motion capture was uh, a huge act asset to us. It saved a ton of time and gave us cinematic, uh, uh, real quality to the characters that we couldn't have had any other way. Um, even with the robot animation, even though their, their legs were backwards, we, we used motion capture and the way we did that was I, I, uh, I walked backwards, crouched down like this, and then we took my upper body data and swung it around 180 degrees. So that the, all the, the robot characters have a human feel to them, yet they're robotic. So it's kind of a little quirkiness to them that they, they move um, fluidly, yet you see a, a, a robot structure there, so you kind of question yourself what you're looking at. The things that are pretty transparent to the user is the, um, all the pallet shifting that we do. We, while you're playing the game, maybe you'll, you'll notice that on some of the doors as you go through them, you'll see an animation of you going through the door. When that happens, there's actually a pallet change going on. And uh, doing things that way gives, enables us to use an infinite amount of colors per level. So every time we have a doorway or a cutaway, we can shift palettes and swap out the palettes, swap out all the art, um, so that the characters can be lit um, according to their environment rather than globally for the entire game. Um, the gun can be lit accordingly um, and, and so on so that we, we get unlimited colors. So that's what, why we have a more cohesive look and a, and a feel to our environment. My name is Rich Carp. I was a lead programmer on Assassin, which mostly means that I did uh, most of the gameplay stuff. The game's fairly straightforward, but there are a lot of special cases in it. Uh, a lot of the enemies have to be killed before certain doors open and things like that, so that was a little bit difficult. Just from the initial design, it was sort of a, a perspective, first-person game, but it added the element of multimedia to it in an integrated way and told the storyline. I think that sets us apart from most of the other games out there. In order to integrate the videos into the gameplay, we had to uh, queue them up so that they could appear on screen as quickly as possible because you don't want to wait five seconds while the CD seeks out your video and plays it. So we had to do some special tricks to get that to work.